good evening everyone so we are welcome back to the biology series and today we will be talking about the i its function structure and uh, development today's speaker is ms priya battu she has done her uh, msc honors in geology from punjab university chandigarh she is currently pursuing phd from neuroscience research lab department of neurology pgi mer chandigarh a phd work is based on the genetics and biomarker analysis in age related macular degeneration and today also we also welcome uh, dr takeshi iwata as a commentator and moderator for the talk he is a uh, director of molecular and cellular biology division national institute of sensory and organs national hospital organization tokyo medical center tokyo japan he received his phd from maijo university in nagoya nagoya japan and joined the national eye institute nih as post doctor fellow where he worked on x linked retinitis pigmentosa he has also worked on the transcriptional regulation of aldose reductase and sorbitol dehydrogenase he returned to japan and started his lab in 2000 his research focuses on the retina and in understanding the molecular mechanism of disease onset he has worked on no normal tension glaucoma age related uh, macular degeneration amd and inherited retinal diseases his research expands from identification of novel disease causing genes development of animal models and pay patient ipsc cells to understand the molecular mechanisms of disease onset and to develop develop therapeutic based on these basic research finding he has identified five novel genes including rp1l1 cc2t2 c21orf2 lrn rrtm4 mcat and working on more inherited retinal diseases genes He is his in-depth work on optineurin gene for, uh, for normal tension glaucoma and HTRA1 gene for AMD is well known. He is the head of Japan Eye Genetics Consortium and the Global Eye Genetic Consortium. He has recently developed a phenotype genotype database GeneI for global uh, use. With this introduction, I welcome Dr. Takeshi to uh, open this session with his opening remarks. Thank you very much uh, for this nice introduction. Uh, this this evening, so we're going to have a very nice uh, uh, talk uh, speaker from uh, PGM MER about the uh, eye structure, function, and development. So I would like to introduce the speaker Priya Batu. Please go on with your presentation. We have. We can see your slides, uh, you, sir. So today's talk, today's talk is development of eye. The human eye is a sense organ that reacts to light and allows vision. The eye is a part of sensory nervous system. It is spherical in shape, about two point five centimeter in diameter. It is situated in orbital cavity. If we look at the gross structure of the eye, there are three layers which make the entire eyeball. Starting from the outside towards the inside, the outer layer is called the sclera, followed by choroid, and then retina. The white portion is sclera, the red portion here is choroid, and the yellow layer it is retina. If we look at the interior portion, the Sclera is um, covered with the help of conjunctiva and extend to form a transparent covering called as cornea. The choroid extends to form ciliary body and ciliary muscles with the help of which the lens is suspended in the eye. Anterior to the lens, there lies iris and pupil. There are two uh, gel-like structures uh, which are aqueous humor and vitreous humor present in the eye. Aqueous humor lies anterior to the lens and uh, Vitreous humor lies posterior to the lens. We will take up these structures one by one now. 
the external part if we look at the external parts of the eye we can see there are two eyelids upper eyelid and lower eyelid the white structure that we see when we see an eye is called sclera the colored portion which can be brown green or blue this is co uh, called as iris and the central spot which appears black is called pupil there is also a triangular tissue uh, which is called as caruncle where the tear ducts open the eyelids are thin folds of the skin that cover and protect the cornea and conjunctiva from chemical or physical activity two activities are associated with the eyelids which are squinting and blinking squinting is uh, generally done when you partially uh, close your eyelids so that less light enters the eye and blinking helps in spreading the tear film over the eyes for the lubrication then the eyelashes they are the short stiff hairs that shield the eye from irritants such as dust the sclera is called as the white of the eye it is tough and opaque outer layer and protects the inner structure of the eye the conjunctiva is also known as the mucous membrane it is a transparent membrane that covers the sclera and lines the inner surface of the eyelids it secretes mucus and also small volume of the tears so that eye can be kept moist then there are tear glands the tear glands are located below the eyebrow and they secrete tears which contain salts and bacterial enzymes to wash out foreign particles or the chemical irritants they also help in lubrication of the conjunctiva and it reduces the friction between the eyelids and the eyeball they also prevent eye from drying out the tear film allows atmospheric oxygen to dissolve and diffuse into the cornea the cornea is a uh, see through skin that covers the eye it appears clear and transparent and has no blood vessels in it the pupil is a opening in the center of the iris and it permits the light to enter the eye then there is iris it is pigmented layer of muscular tissue which gives the eye its color that is why the people are having different colors colored eyes um, it all depends on the melanin pigment if there will be more melanin it will absorb more light and it will uh, reflect less so the eye will appear darker and if the person is having a uh, less melanin the amount of li light uh, will be uh, which will be reflected will be more and the eye will appear lighter in color the iris is also involved in um, construction and dilation of the pupil so when the surrounding light is is a more so the iris contracts and the size of pupil becomes smaller so that less i light enters the eye and when the surrounding light is uh, dim the iris um, relaxes so that the pupil becomes maximum in size and the light can enter into the eye then coming to the inner structure there are two types of humors which are called as aqueous and vitreous humor aqueous humor is a clear watery fluid which is uh, produced by the ciliary body and fills the area between the lens and the cornea it supplies nutrients and nourishes the cornea and lens and it also helps in maintaining the convex shape of the uh, cornea along with reflecting light into the pupil then the vitreous humor it Lie, uh, lies posterior to the lens and it is transparent jelly like substance and it forms the bulk of the eyeball it also helps in maintaining the shape of the eye then comes the lens the lens is transparent and biconvex uh, in structure it is elastic so that its curvature can be changed to adjust its refractive and focusing power it is uh, responsible for focusing light into the retina then there is ciliary body uh ciliary body is a circular structure here you can see the pink uh, structure is ciliary body so it uh, is an extension of the iris the colored part of the eye the ciliary body produces fluid which is called as the aqueous humor it also contains the ciliary muscle which changes the shape of the lens and this process is called as accommodation so when uh, we are uh, seeing an object which is kept at distant um, point so the ciliary muscle fibers become relaxed and the ciliary suspensory ligament becomes contracted so that the lens becomes thin and uh, can focus the light at the distant uh, place and when we are uh, looking at a object which is placed closer to the eyes 
Mesiliary muscles are contracted and the ligament becomes relaxed. The lens now becomes thick and now fo can focus at the closer objects. Then comes the choroid. Choroid is black pigmented layer under the sclera that prevents the internal reflection of light rays. It is filled with the blood capillaries and it is rich in blood vessels. The choroid is modified to form iris and ciliary body at the front of the eye. Then retina. Retina is innermost light sensitive uh, layer of the eyeball and on this layer the images are formed. Retina is rich in photoreceptors which are the light sensitive cells. Photoreceptors can be rod, rods and cones. Uh, if you want to see the detailed structure of retina, you can refer to a talk given by Dr. Shweta previously in this series. Then the optic nerve, it is located at the back of the eye. It transmits the nerve impulses from the photoreceptors to the brain. The optic nerve is mainly formed from the exons of the uh, retinal ganglion cells, which is the uh, innermost layer of the retina. Then <clears throat> comes the blind spot. The blind spot is the point in the retina from where the optic nerve exits the eye. There are no photoreceptors present in this spot. Uh, hence, there is no vision formation here. Then there is a fovea. <clears throat> it is a pit in the retina where images are, the fo are focused. It is also called as macula. It has higher density of cones but has no rods. The fovea permits detailed vision and it is concentrated with the photoreceptors. Then how we actually see an object, it is a series of processes which involves integration between brain and retina. The light enters the eye and cornea and lens helps to focus it on the retina. Uh, the process of photo transduction takes place in the retina. If you want to uh, learn about photo transduction, again, you can refer to talk given by Dr. Shweta previously in the series. Then the light energy is converted to electrical energy, uh, uh, chemical energy here, and the impulses travel through the optic nerve uh, from the optic chiasmata to lateral geniculate nucleus and finally to the visual cortex where the brain helps to decipher the image. Then now coming to the development of the eye, the development of eye starts in the third week of embryonic development and it continues till the 10th of the development. Now we know that the three germ layers form the different uh, organs of the body, but in formation of eye, mesodermal and ectodermal tissues both contribute. So the uh, eye formation commences with the development of optic cup and its vesicle. The developing brain is having forebrain, midbrain, and hindbrain. So on the 22nd day, the, there is formation of uh, small outgrowths from each side of the forebrain, which are called as the optic grooves. These optic grooves develop into optic vesicle as this neural tube closes. So, and this optic vesicle, it induces the overlying ectoderm to form a lens placot, which is precursor for the lens. The optic um, vesicles now develop into the optic cup, which appear as a goblet. The optic cup is having two distinct layers, the outer layer and the inner layer. The inner layer is thicker and the outer layer is thinner. The meanwhile, the lens pinches off from the ectoderm into the, this uh, cavity of the optic cup and the, there is a division of cells in the lens to form complete uh, lens and then there is development of retina. This optic uh, cup is having two parts, the anterior and posterior part. Anterior one fifth of the optic cup develops into iris and ciliary body, and the posterior four fifth develops into the retina. So the, as we know that retinal pigment epithelium is the outermost layer of the retina. So it develops at around 4.5 weeks of the embryonic development. It, the process of de development of RPE is quite straightforward. It uh, develops with the appearance of the melanin granules in the cells, immediately adjacent to the intraretinal space, which is between the two inner and outer layer of this optic cup. There is formation of the photoreceptors. The next layer forms the uh, Muller cells and the innermost layer forms the retinal ganglion cells. 
the exons of these retinal ganglion cells fill up this lumen of the optic stalk which is connected with the forebrain and this optic uh, stalk uh, now eventually becomes the uh, optic nerve now development of choroid sclera and cornea they develop at around 6th week of the embryonic development from the mesenchyme which lies um, exterior to this optic cup the there is a condensation of this uh, mesenchyme to form choroid and sclera it condenses into two layers the outer uh, fibrous layers which is called as sclera and inner uh, pigmented layer which is called as the choroid also the mesenchyme forms this cornea then the iris and ciliary body develops from the anterior portion of the optic cup in the ciliary processes develop as the folds and this extends to form the iris the eyelid and conjunctiva also formed during the sixth week they develop from the neural crest cells and the uh, mesenchyme at around sixth week and they develop as a two folds and which are connected in the middle uh, in front of the cornea and uh, these eyelids on 27th week they separate now some common eye diseases are refractive errors which are myopia hypermetropia and astigmatism uh, in myopia a person is uh, near sighted but he is not able to view objects which are distant clearly uh, this is because in myopia the image formation occurs in front of the retina and not on the retina so the person is able to see near objects clearly but not the far objects and in hypermetropia opposite happens when the image formation occurs at distance from the retina and not on the retina and the person is able to see distant objects and not the close objects in astigmatism the image formation on retina is abrupt and the person is not able to see the objects clearly whether they are kept at distant or close uh, position then press myopia occurs with the aging this is hypermetropia which occurs in aging the person is not able to see the clear object uh, near objects clearly then there are certain uh, diseases which are quite common in the world which are cataract which is clouding of the lens the person is again uh, develops blurry and uh, unclear vision then glaucoma in which the person is uh, the optic nerves are damaged this can be due to increased pressure in the eye or it can be independent of the increased pressure then there is age related macular degeneration in this the there is degeneration of the photoreceptors in the macula part which is central part of the retina so the person loses the central vision whereas the peripheral vision is the in, intact then there is diabetic retinopathy it is one of the complications associated with the diabetes in which the blood, uh, blood vessels are damaged in the uh, eye then with this thought that don't just leave a will leave a vision i would like to end my presentation thank you Thank you very much for your excellent uh, talk. So I think she has covered very nicely about the segments of all the eyes and the functions. And at the last part, uh, development, how this uh, eye is developed. So any questions from the, uh, the listeners? Is there any, how, how can we receive questions? So we can ask uh, right from here. I have one question. Uh, uh, Priya, uh, yes. the, the structure and the function you showed is uh, basically the human aspect, right? Yes. Sir. Is there any major difference with the uh, mouse eyes? Because a lot of experiments are done with mice before they go to non-human primates and finally come as the clinical trials, at least for the drugs that are being developed. Anything you want to flag in terms of structure difference between mice and the yes, humans? Sir. Uh, so first difference is the position of the eyes. The um, eyes in humans are placed in frontal uh, uh, aspect and in the mice, the eyes are placed uh, laterally. Also, if we look at the ciliary muscle, the ciliary muscles are less developed in the mice. So there, there is no accommodation of vision in mice. And in humans, the ciliary muscles are quite developed. So we are able to focus the light uh, where we want to uh, focus also the lens is uh, 
round in uh, rodents and it um, takes up most of the uh, space in the eye as compared to uh, humans where the most of the space in eye is filled with the vitreous fluid. Uh, the photoreceptor are also different in uh, mice and humans. The cones can see um, red, green and blue color in humans, whereas there are only uh, green and blue cones in the mice. Also, their eyes are sensitive to UV light and we can't see UV. So these are some differences. Great. I thought you will also flag macula, but you gave, yes, gave a very good list. <laughs> um, macula is absent in um, rodents. Thank you. Thank you, Priya. Okay, then I'd like to extend her talk by adding a few more uh, informations. And I will uh, share the slides uh, on my side. I'm sitting the uh, share. <clears throat> Is my slide shared? Yes, sir. Okay. So um, <clears throat> here are some of the uh, eyes from the animals. And then as you can see, uh, many animals do have a eye, or I should say a sensory organs that will detect the, uh, uh, the light. Uh, this is to find a prey or uh, escape from becoming a prey. So uh, there's a lot of uh, uh, studies on these structures of other uh, animals uh, like this um, uh, planaria or uh, fly. And uh, Priya uh, ex elegantly talked about the human um, uh, structures, but there are many other animals that has a, a different type of uh, structures. So this is the uh, human eye, and then Priya has already talked about each segment of the eye, but uh, uh, the cornea pod actually uh, reflects the eye. 80% of the light is actually reflects at the cornea, and then iris will adjust the amount of eye going to the retina, and the lens will focus, and it will hit this place called the macula where the photoreceptors are extremely condensed. And because of this high density of photoreceptor in this one millimeter of uh, square of uh, uh, segment, we have a very, very uh, fine resolution of the visions. And only high primates and few uh, birds like hawks uh, and some fish uh, does have these maculars and they do have the uh, very high resolutions. And what I've been uh, studying is the, about the diseases of an uh, eye. And uh, this is a National Geographic in 2016 that they had a, uh, a, a, have a cover of this, how many people have a, a vision impaired. And currently uh, we have about 285 million people with visual impairments and 39 people completely blind. And here are the, some of the reasons. Uh, 43 is a refractive error, meaning that you need a glasses and 30% uh, is cataract. Uh, Priya has uh, very nicely uh, mentioned about this. And also glaucoma, 1% is age-related macular degenerations. And 90% of the patient is in the developing countries and 82% of these uh, people with visual impairment is actually uh, over 50 years old. So uh, Priya has already talked about cataract, but cataract is a uh, is about the lens, the opacity of the lens. If you have some kind of opacity in the, the structure, uh, the, the proteins, uh, uh, oxidative proteins, uh, glycosylated proteins, it will refract uh, the, the light. It will scatter the light, and that makes it uh, very hard to see. Also, she mentioned about the glaucoma. Glaucoma, as she talked, uh, the aqueous humor from the body to the terrestrial network, it is always continuously circulating. But if you have a clog in the terrestrial meshwork, 
the uh, ocular pressure will increase that will push uh, this optic nerve and leading to a optic cup, which causes uh, a glaucoma. And here you can see the black part is not where you are not seeing and it will decrease your, uh, will reduce your um, uh, visual field. Another uh, disease is age-related macular degeneration. 1% of impaired people have this disease. And this is a uh, vessels, or choroidal vessels that come out in the uh, macular area, which is the center for the vision. And that's why we will lose the central vision. But this central vision is very important to see other people's face, to read letters, to see what you want to see is right in the center of the retina. So damage to this macular will uh, cause definitely a very strong uh, effect. So when I gave a talk at 2016, I got these slides from my Indian colleagues. And this is sort of, the data is about five years old, but uh, I think uh, it will, maybe it's, it's still continuing. Uh, so uh, in India, 60% uh, of the people uh, will, impaired uh, uh, vision is, uh, is cataract. And then you have a uh, large uh, people of uh, refractive errors, and then uh, you have some glaucomas as well. So if you compare with the Japan, this is in the 1990s, you have a um, diabetic retinopathy, glaucoma, and cataract. In 2007, as the society changed, uh, the, the, the custom changed, the food changed, uh, the, the disease also changed. So we have now a glaucoma diabetic retinopathy. And just recently in 2020, it was released that the glaucoma is still there, but the diabetic retinopathy is the third and retinitis pigmentosa is number two. So the prevalence of the blindness in India, this is also coming from the 2016 slides that you can see as you get older, you have more prevalence of blindness. Uh, the sex difference is slightly a uh, female is uh, higher. And you have the education levels uh, here and then urban and rural uh, difference, not too many differences. So this is the data from the United States and cataract, diabetic retinopathy, age-related macular vision, glaucoma. As you can see, as you get older, uh, you are likely to get more uh, eye diseases. So uh, uh, this is the aging is definitely the risk factor for all these uh, eye diseases. So environmental factors and genetic factor has been talked about these diseases, common diseases, uh, and cataract, glaucoma, AMD has been, uh, have been very studies. Also the genetic factor uh, is also playing a role. And with the number of uh, analysis on the genetics, uh, it's called the gen uh, genome-wide association studies. You look for the small uh, differences in the nucleotide of the genome and try to find which part of the chromosome is associated with the diseases. Uh, you can find association of this particular part of the chromosome is associated with these diseases. So we have all this information and many groups around the world is working on. But there are also a very genetic uh, oriented diseases called inherited eye diseases. It can be uh, inherited eye, retinal diseases, corneal diseases. It can be a uh, uh, cataract lens diseases. But these are uh, occurred by a mutation in the uh, particular genes. So we are very interested in looking into the genes, the sequence of the humans. And then you can, as you see, uh, we have two chromosomes for, uh, for one to 22 and X uh, and Y. So uh, we now have a very good uh, technology to sequence the entire genome of a human in just few hours. So that's what, uh, and then the price is getting down uh, and that's what we're currently doing. As we know that the uh, human started from Africa and then expanded to all of the world. So uh, we have different, um, the, the, the height, uh, maybe the, the color of the hair is different. And then, and of course, all the structure of the eye, 
the body is a little bit different because of these slight mutation that we have for each person. There's about 20 to 30,000 nucleotide differences between individuals. And these differences has made uh, these uh, unique characteristics of each uh, ethnic groups. But also sometimes if it hits on very important genes, then you will have a disease. Uh, 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 disease. So this is a, a la last uh, slide uh, and uh, showing that the dominant type of uh, diseases. So uh, one of the, the chromosome is mutated and that if it goes to the child, this child will have a, a, a disease or you need a both uh, chromosomes with a mutation like this um, girl has two uh, mutations, each from parents. It's called autosomal recessive. And these kind of rare events does happen. Uh, so uh, we have been working uh, to get this, these rare diseases throughout the world and establish a global eye genetic consortiums. And we gathered um, in May every year. And also we just started a lab in uh, Mumbai with our Indian colleagues, and uh, we're trying to find uh, these uh, mutations. So uh, I just want to say there are common diseases uh, for human, human, but also uh, inherited uh, very rare diseases. Uh, disease. So thank you. <clears throat> thank you, Dr. Iwata, for uh, bringing our attention towards the genetic part of the diseases and their causes which is very, very much important, not only for the eye diseases, but other diseases as well, uh, which may be metabolic, but ha may have also a genetic uh, cause to it. So we have a question from Facebook, uh, which is posted by Minoti Anand. Uh, the question is, which is more serious, uh, glaucoma or diabetic retinopathy? Is there any cure of any, both of these? Well, I think it's... Uh... <laughs> both, both are very severe, but I have to say that 80% of the glaucoma, the progress of glaucoma can be stopped by reducing the uh, intraocular pressure. And there's a lot of drugs for this. And for uh, diabetic retinopathy is about uh, a capillary coming into the retina. Also, we have a anti-VEGF drug that will suppress this uh, capillary coming into uh, retina, but not all the patient can be saved. So the, I think the research has shifted to 20% uh, of the glaucoma patients and the patient who cannot be saved by VEGF treatment. Uh, my, I have a question. In yes. the GWAS studies, like uh, when we are talking about 5 million or more than that SNPs, so does it happen that one specific uh, gene or something is overlooked by a very large number of cutoffs and which is put up during the analysis? I think uh, currently we have uh, mostly looked at the entire genomes, but uh, this is done by a technique called the GWAS, which is looking at particular SNPs within the genome. But I think the people are now shifting to the sequence of the entire genes which will pick up more in details which, which sequence or uh, number of sequence in that region is actually affecting the, the diseases. I think we will go into that phase in, in coming uh, years and find more uh, details of the uh, sequence differences versus the, the diseases onset. Thank you, sir. Oh, if there had any more questions from our viewers? I, I want to, I would just want to comment that Dr. Iwata, thank you for that very nice presentation. I was struck by that beautiful slide in which you showed, uh, you know, 1990 to 2007 hmm. is a change in the epidemiological or the incidence of various diseases. So I guess this is happening, as you mentioned, by the change in lifestyle. Yes. And it makes a very important point for me because today in the afternoon, I was, I went into a discussion with someone of the importance of lifestyle uh, in uh, the incidence or the increase or decrease, decrease of various diseases. Actually, and the, the other side, people were saying, no, uh, this is all uh, 
not much of a function of the lifestyle and uh, most of the things can be uh, done at the treatment level preventive health care may not have much implications may not have much evidence so i'm bringing my argument to you oh okay so i think there's a, yeah so um i showed about this first glaucoma and second uh, diabetic retinopathy and now it's not second anymore that Diab diabetic retinopathy is not second anymore it's now uh, third and then red eye pigmentosa is second i think the vegf treatment has worked very well uh, and then that's why we're reducing but because the glaucoma population is so much in, uh, in japan that still 80 percent uh, uh, 20 percent that cannot be saved by just lowering the eye uh, intraocular pressure is still large large number that's why there is a large number of this people still as number one but i think the number of glaucoma patient has decreased i think in the in this 20 years or so so does lifestyle uh, change or lifestyle modification has any implications for the eye diseases Yes, I think so. Uh, especially uh, people are using more and more eye, I think so. Uh, people are staring at phones and pads <laughs> and computers, and we're doing exactly that right now. <laughs> so right. We, are, we are looking into a very small area of this place and trying to maintain the focus for a very, very long time. Uh, I think that is uh, quite a different uh, lifestyle than 50 years ago, I think. Uh, maybe I will add something. Hello, Takeshi, how are you? Welcome, Dr. Sundaresan. Dr. Sundaresan is professor of genetics in Aravinda Eye Institute down in uh, down south, uh, Madurai. Welcome, and okay. please ask a question. Yeah, I think uh, uh, I know uh, Takashi for a long, long back. We are very good <laughs> friends. I visited his lab, and he's the keynote, he person for the Global Identity Consortium. I think uh, the concern with the glaucoma, uh, Takashi, uh, the concern with the India, we have large number of primary open angle glaucoma. Mm -hmm. We don't have any, any normal tension. Oh, I see. That is, you know, you, if, you, if you compare with Japan, Korea, and uh, other places, the normal tension is very, com is very common, you know. Yes. And then angle closure, uh, especially in Asian specific Chinese, uh, angle closure. So that is the based on the, the anatomical uh, uh, eye of the eye is made as no. So concerned with the angle closure and normal tension is very common there, but that is not very common in India. So that is, most, mostly is primary open angle glaucoma. Yeah, I think uh, both, both, yeah. Uh, uh, I think both of you uh, see uh, is a kind of uh, continuing medical education for me in this lockdown period. You know, I think uh, both Priya and you. I think recalled my my memories. You know, I think it's a very 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 informative talk. I recall from the beginning. You know, the structure of the eye and uh, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, it's very nice, very nice. And, and which we had forgotten over the specialization and all yeah. the molecular genetics. And this was also for me very nice <laughs> and very yeah. good revision. Over yeah, to you, Manjari. I think there is a question on Facebook. You can read and ask uh, any of the speakers. Uh, there is one question from Facebook uh, posted by Rita Isaac. She is asking, uh, what is keratoconus, how it develops, and is it a genetic disease? Uh, please go ahead. I think, I, shall, I, shall I tell you something? Or? Yeah, because I don't work on cornea. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, okay. I think, uh, see, uh, see, see, concern with the keratoconus, uh, uh, you know, um, um, is a kind of a, a form, thinning cornea, okay? Is a cornea, is, is, is a thinning the cornea, it make a cone shape, so you can't able to see properly, you know, like exactly what uh, Takashi mentioned, the cataract. So it's a diffused uh, 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 vision and you can't able to see properly. So uh, keratoconus, yes, obviously there is uh, some gene behind it, but you know, they're right now they're telling is a kind of inflammatory disease too. It's a, you know, it's a kind of a in inflammatory disease too. You know, that's what is a recurrent report. And another one, uh, you can use them in some cross-linking, you know, uh, some um, riboflavin, you know, if you treat them in riboflavin with the cross-linking, I think you can you, you can cure the keratoconus. So the, the answer is keratoconus, yes, it is a genetically uh, associated disease. And we worked on that and we published some paper. The thing is, again, it is not a single gene, single disease. It's a multiple gene uh, disorder. Especially in India, 
the Narayan Mitralaya, you know, they are working on very uh, excellently there on Kerala Yes. Thank you, sir. So, if there are any more questions from our listeners, maybe you can allow uh, Dr. Uh, Priya Bhattu to ask Dr. Takeshi, or in case yes. she has any question. Sir, I want to ask one thing that in uh, here in India, uh, the prescription for dry AMD to slow down the course of dry AMD is antioxidants. So do you think that it is the right approach or how it is done in uh, Japan? So uh, I don't think there is any treatment for this uh, dry type AMD. And many companies are actually working on this. Um, so uh, for the wet, we have VEGF, uh, anti-VEGF treatments, yeah. but dry, we don't have, <coughs> excuse me. So many, many companies are actually working, but uh, I think the problem is that we don't have a good animal model because it's related to macular and all this animal like mice, rats, rabbits, dog, mice, pigs, cows, they don't have macular. So it's very difficult to uh, create an animal model that will have a precisely um, uh, uh, the disease of AMD. And this, this is not just for AMD, uh, even for glaucoma, uh, the like a mice and humans, the optic nerve, the, the size of the optic uh, head, nerve head is quite uh, big in primates versus in the mice is very small. So getting an optic cup of, uh, in mice will be very difficult. And of course, you have nicely mentioned about the aqueous humor drain, uh, the system is quite different from mice and, and humans. So uh, even for glaucoma, uh, it's quite challenging uh, to have a, a good animal model. Um, so currently we're trying to make a primate model. Mm, yes. Take a seat. See, I think uh, you, you, so two years ago in the Asia RO meeting, you presented, uh, I think you worked on the monkeys, uh, on AMD, age later macular yes. degeneration. Um, I think the is a very, very late onset disease. You know, you, people get at the age of 65 or 70, but you know, you, your study says within two years, you know, the monkeys, especially the Indian, you know, you have a lot of I mean, uh, that um, um, and, um, study related to AMD. The onset is very, very early. Within two years, the monkeys get them I in mean, AMD. I think, uh, what is the explanation for that? Uh, no, uh, we don't have the AMD, but we have a lot of Drusens. Well, Dru Drusen monkeys, yes. We have a lot of Drusens. So oh, I see. <clears throat> we're trying to find what is Drusen, how it will affect the retina, and yes. Oh, okay, okay, okay. <clears throat> if there are no more questions, I just close the meeting. I'll request all the guests to stay back. Uh, ending this session. Thank you once again, Priya Bhattu, for such a nice presentation. And thank you, Dr. Iwata, for elaborating it towards the genetic aspects of the uh, eye diseases. Uh, I'll request my listeners to come uh, back again for biology series on Monday. So thank you all and good night.